Ah, I'm always a fan of this move. So, in this particular game of Terran vs. Protoss, our Terran decides to start the game off by sending an SCV across, and then he gives the opponent the GLHF. I think that's the correct order to do things in. What I've got for you today is a top-level game, a best-of-five series of Terran vs. Protoss, between some of the very best players in the world right now. This guy, this Terran player right here, is an absolute Protoss murderer. The Protoss player, who spawned just a little bit south of this, is an absolute Terran destroyer. So I've got a feeling this is gonna be a really fun game. A little bit indecisive right there, if he wanted to put the barracks on the low ground or the high ground. He had to wait, I guess, though, until that supply depot was done, so it doesn't really matter all too much. Either way, spotting right here in the top left hand corner, playing with the Red Terran SCVs. We have one of my personal favorite Terrans. He's from South Korea, and he goes by the name of Cure. Cure's TVP has been really impressing me over the last couple of months, so we'll have to see how it's gonna go in this particular series, because his opponent... I would consider this man, and I know statistically that's not currently correct, but I would consider his opponent the current number one protos in the world. Statistics be damned. Spotting right here in the bottom right corner, playing with the blue protos pieces. From Denmark, we have none other than Max Pax. Technically speaking, Hero has been a little bit more successful as of late. I mean, Hero obviously incredibly good at the game, but I actually think that Max Pax gameplay has been a little bit more impressive overall. There you go. Max Pax has decided to go for the early game probe scout, so he sees right now that there's a whole lot of nothing inside of the main base of the Terran. That being said, he also did see two refineries. So, apparently this is considered a whole lot of nothing. Anyways, that is a big indicator that there is a barracks out there somewhere. Could be somewhere in the natural, for example, right over here, right? There's a lot of locations where Terrans can hide it. But, in the end, yeah, you really have to go for a zealot over here. Bunker apparently starts up. That is, of course, in vision range right there of all of those protal structures, but I guess it's mostly just a distraction right here for this Reaper to come in. That Zealot... Ooh, it looks like it killed the SCV as well as the Bunker. So that's actually not too bad right there for Maxipax. He needs to wait until that Stalker of his is out right now to properly deal with this Reaper. Alright. Hmm. I don't think I like this start all too much here for Cure, to be honest. Like, technically, it's pretty good, but yeah, the command center is gonna be so late with an opener like this. And obviously, Max Pax now, well, gets to scout out exactly what he's playing against as well. Two Reapers available. These Reapers are not likely to, to really achieve anything moving forward either, since it's uh, a bunch of Stalkers right here from Max Pax. Uh, he's sending whatever he's got to watch the other side of the map. I really don't see what Cure is gonna be able to achieve with those units, other than, I guess, kill that scouting worker here of the Protoss. Alrighty, so it's gonna be a 1-1-1 right here for Cure. He's following this aggression up with a bunch of Widow Mines. So we're gonna be seeing the Widow Mines fly across the map here momentarily. Obviously, Stimpak and all that is gonna be very delayed as well, because our Terran player is gonna have to fly that barracks back home. The Reapers, though, are looking for an angle here. Maybe they can still find some damage. There's one Stalker in the main base. The other Stalker is coming back home right now. Zealot, in the meantime, by the way, chilling over here in the natural expansion of the... The Terran player. Nice control right there, though, by Max Pax. Who's gonna start off this game, apparently, with a Phoenix opener. Okay. Now, he doesn't know exactly what he's playing against. He doesn't know exactly that this is going to be a Widow Mine drop, I don't think, but... It is gonna be something aggressive here from the Terran. And generally speaking, Phoenixes are really good at making sure that you don't die to anything stupid, assuming you do control them well. And that's the big assumption, right? So if you're, say, for example, a Gold League Protoss player, I mean, technically speaking, you can have all of the tools at your disposal, but it takes a lot of skill to actually micro all of these units correctly, because early on, it oftentimes can feel for Protoss, like they literally have like four units out, and they all have to be in the perfect place, and they all have to be perfectly microed in order to shut down that early game Terran aggression. But if you do it well, just like this, you can technically take no damage early on. Oh. Okay. Well, that was two more probes than was necessary, but fair enough. I'm assuming that eventually... Oh, God. Uh, 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 okay. Eventually, all of this should get cleaned up. Reaper over here as well. The two Reapers sacrificing themselves. And in the end, you know what? Um, this wasn't really that great right here for Maxi Pax. Yeah. I mean, he does clean up all of those units. But 11 probes by the five-minute mark is definitely something that Terran can be happy with. Although, that being said, it was, of course, not free. His own command center was pretty late. And for the foreseeable future, Protoss is gonna be left alone. Now, what exactly is Max Pax going to do? So, Max Pax won't be too happy about that early game defense here. He can definitely micro that ever so slightly better. 
But, of course, that's easier said than done. Whatever unit he's got right now, though, is gonna be sent across the map. Ooh, can he get the Raven? He does get the Raven. It's gonna come at the cost of a Phoenix. Zealot takes an awful lot of damage as well, but does survive for now. And getting that Raven is real good. I'm assuming we're gonna be going for a third Nexus here momentarily, although... Max Max is feeling the heat a little bit. He decides to go for the Robo Bay. New Raven immediately starts up as well here for Cure, because he really wants to have that uh, Disable available against those heavy hitters from the Protals. Alrighty. So, third Nexus is going to be starting up right now. There it is. And we're just going to continue the Phoenix production. Okay. Stimpak comes up right now. Small little supply block here for Cure. Will be resolved though. Phoenix is here, just lifting up whatever they can. But basically, until these upgrades are all finished, Protoss is gonna have full map control. That's where those Phoenixes are so nice, right? Like, they're great for offense, they're great for map control, and they're really good for defense as well. It's just that you have to control them really well. And generally speaking, I mean, I guess that's one of the reasons, right? Say, for example, we're looking at a game of Archon mode or two versus two or whatever, it seems like these units have even more value because. They really do reward active play. If you have one guy dedicated to making those Phoenixes and controlling them the entire game long, they really are one of the greatest units in the entire game of StarCraft, but that's of course also immediately why a lot of players don't enjoy playing them so much, because they really are a unit that on their own can probably soak up like 200 actions per minute. Like that was fantastic, look at that. That's a whole group of Marines going down together with an SCV. And now these, <laughs> they just fly back home. You obviously do need to have a little bit of energy available as well for the base defense, but they're so fast that they will be able to make their way home pretty easily as well. It's just very easy that while you're playing a game of StarCraft 2, you're, you're really focused on microing your Phoenix, that your Colossus transition is going to be late. And yeah, it's very easy to mess up. If you can catch this Raven, by the way, this push is not going to do anything. So real quick, the Raven has an ability called Interference Matrix. It's the third one. Uh, it's not the third one. It's the second one right over there. Uh, it will allow the Terran to temporarily disable, in particular, the Colossus here. So it's going to be a dance between the Phoenixes and the Raven, and then the Colossi and that Raven as well. So Max Max actually putting his army over here on the high ground. He's planted a pylon over here too. So at the very least, he sees the angle that our Terran player is uh, planning on fighting this from. The extended thermal lens is only about halfway done, but the second Colossus is available. Small little supply block right now as well for max specs. At least uh, when it comes to that Colossus production. Well, at the very least, one of the pylons there provided supply, but now he was, well, gonna lose one as well. After that third command center has really kicked in, or after the third Nexus rotor has really kicked in, now is when max specs can finally start adding on additional production structures too. You can see that this is a little bit messy still though. One of the Metavex just ended up going down. Cure trying to go for that elevator play into the main base. Okay. Well, that's the... Okay, yep. That's the Interference Matrix is going down, but they will come at the cost of that... Uh, that Raven. In the meantime, there's a little bit of aggression over here as well. Two Metavex have unloaded their units. Five probes end up going down, but I think the extra Metavex of units getting killed there was absolutely massive! Max Packs! Whoa! -ho -ho -ho! Flying those phoenixes over all of those biological units, dragging the Widowmine damage into that bio army. Of course the Widowmines can deal friendly fire as well. That was a little bit costly as far as the phoenix numbers go, but that army got cleaned up, and that is the most important thing. At this point, apparently, Curious decided he wants to mostly go back home. There is a pylon over here as well on the right side, so Max Pax also scouts this. He grabs one of the siege tanks on the retreat. Yeah, he needs to send those units over here, though. Fourth next is now coming up in the bottom left hand corner. Okay. All things considered, though, the economy right here for our Terran player is really solid. Yes, the trades have been a little bit lackluster, but he has done quite a bit of eco damage in this game. Plus, on top of that, now that he's got the third command center up and running, that's usually the cue for Terran players to go into that Ghost Academy. And the Ghost Academy is going to be a wonderful tool right here for the Terran. It's gonna be fantastic against basically everything Protoss, but also against units like, for example, those Phoenixes, right? It's easy to forget, but these guys are spellcasters. They're flying magicians. And when you remove the energy out of them, they are basically paper planes. Archon's coming up right now, too. Q 
Jaris decided though to start the aggression up and this could actually get a little bit awkward. There's a matter of fact drop going that direction. At the same time, Cure scouts the Nexus in the bottom left hand corner and he wants to finish off this Nexus over here. Couple Zealots here trying to get some damage done as well. Nexus over here falls, but now suddenly this army has been positioned in such a way that it's very difficult for Protoss to actually get back into this direction. Yeah, Nexus over here gets cancelled. A whole lot of probes are gonna go down as well. Medivac drop over here. Zealots in the meantime though, they have been warped in inside of the main base of the Terran player. They're picking off a lot of those Terran units as they drop out of the production structures. Cure positioning them though in such a way that the very least, the surface area here gets removed and that Medivac putting in a ton of work as well, keeping that Marauder in the front alive. Another cancel on that Nexus over here. I mean, this is looking really nice for Cure, who started to bring the heat. Yeah, he saw an angle. He saw an opportunity and he immediately jumped on it. Now suddenly, Protoss is forced into an all-in. This is the last position you really want to be in as a Protoss player, because right now he's a full base behind the Terran, and that is absolutely massive. It's up to Cure right now to just defend against this incoming attack, and as long as he pulls that off, I mean, this army can't really attack. Yeah, as long as he pulls off the defense, he's going to be in a fantastic position, but there's really no way for Max Pax to push into this right now. A Disruptor is coming up, obviously a nice comeback mechanic. He's still killing Zealots in the main base though, so the aggression is not done just yet. Phoenixes are still around too, but the supply count right now for Max Pax is just nothing all too impressive. He has killed a ton of SCVs, but of course Terrans can replace a lot of those lost workers with mules as well. So the worker count right now being in favor of Terran definitely is a good spot for him. Stimpak gets used. I don't see that there's uh, yeah, I just don't see enough Protoss here. He can micro his butt off if he wants to. Phoenixes here are putting in a lot of work, but there's very few Marines remaining, and Marines are, of course, the target that those, well, those Colossi really want to kill. When there are no more Marines to roast, though, since Marauders are armored units, the Colossi just stop dealing the vast majority of their damage. And because of that, it's Cure who obtains the victory in game number one. Gresven is gonna be game number two. A much more conventional start this time around right here from Cure. He decided to go for Marine. No scouting on the other side of the map whatsoever, which is technically a little bit risky. But he's trying to make up for that by going for that bunker over here at the front. And the odds of our Terran player going up against an early game proxy are relatively low. Even though there's the build, of course, known as the Max Pax opener. The Max Pax build that Mr. Max Pax invented a long time ago. I haven't really seen him play it all too much as of late. Maybe he'll bring it out again in this series, though, because... It almost feels like a little bit of bait right now, dangling in front of his face, right? Because Cure going for a scoutless opener? I mean, I think Max Pax at this, uh, at this point in the game must be thinking, yo, if I would have gone for the proxy, it would have been a fantastic start for me. Anyhow, Twilight Council this time around here for Maxi Pax. It's going to be a quick 1-1-1 one, one, one after the command center here for Cure. So the CC is going to finish up nice and early. This is going to be a bit of a variety though, right? So... Toilet Council openers are phenomenal if you can micro your units correctly, and I guess that's a bit of a theme in the Protoss vs. Terran early game. Max Pax, one of the very best, I would say the very best Blink micro players in all of StarCraft 2. He decides to recall the Adept because apparently it got stuck in a pretty peculiar position. Either way, that's a little bit of energy gone on the Nexus, but nothing all too crazy. Max Pax is very good when it comes to microing the Stalkers and the War Prism and everything all at the same time. The downside, though, of these Protoss openers is that it's also very flimsy. It's all very easy to accidentally fall off the court and, well, then you plummet to your death. Cure opening up once again with a Widowmine drop. Takes a bit of a different way to get here, but it's gonna be four Widowmines to try and be as annoying as possible. And obviously, by the time that these units get across the map, a Blink will not be done yet. So it's critical right now for a Protoss player to be in the right position at the right time. But like I already said, Protoss in the early game quite literally has like four units. And you have to be positioning your units in such a way that you can defend against basically everything. So that's why we have a pylon over here providing vision for a medevac that could be, could be coming from the north. We have an adept over here, a couple additional stalkers warped in in a natural two. He needs to be in position to shut down this drop lane and to pull those probes very, very rapidly. Instant movement right there by the Protoss, you love to see it. One thing that's nice here, so that was really well done. Hellions! Okay, trying to get in. There's still one Widowmine available. 
Oh, he's retargeting here. Yeah, one thing that's nice right here from these top-level Terrans is that they will always come in with the Medivac at the exact same moment because they will be executing their early game build order perfectly. So you can glance at the minimap. Like, this is one of the things you will have to learn if you want to play Protoss versus Terran at a high level. You will have to learn the exact second on each of the maps where you should expect a Widowmine drop. And that sounds maybe a little bit tedious, but you should basically point your eyes to the minimap at, like, I don't know, 424 or whatever, right? To, like, see the Medivac flying into your main base. And those are the little moves, I think, where a lot of players get a little bit caught up. Because on maps with a longer rush distance, that time is going to be ever so slightly different. If you're, you know, going up against lower level players, it may be a little bit difficult to pull that off. Now, here's that Blink Stalker micro that I was talking about. One of the siege tanks does end up going down. Hellions now eventually did get in. They get a couple probes. Widowmine over here also killing four additional workers, or four workers at the very least in total. We're gonna apparently blink forward once again, though, with another siege tank coming out. Is there enough available, though, here for Maxipax to clean all of this up? Cure doing a nice job creating chaos, knowing very well that his opponent is occupied microing those stalkers here. There's only so much attention you can really have in a game of StarCraft 2, but that is a lot of SCVs going down as well. Siege tank number three, I was gonna say, that's very aggressively positioned, especially if the stalkers decide to head on over towards the low ground. Stalkers once again though, moving around over here. Adept wants to shade behind the mineral line to go after a couple more of those SCVs. Bunker over here at the front, not going to happen. Nice little bit of pickup micro as well with that warp prism. All of the aggression on the other side of the map has been dealt with, so Max Max can focus all of his attention over here. Okay, well, Stimpak is gonna finish up in about half a minute or so from now. That's gonna make the base defense so much easier, but you do need to have units available as well. And so far, it seems to me that Maxpex is getting some phenomenal trades in. Okay, we're gonna even make this more difficult right now by splitting up the units. Fantastic. These Stalkers are going to the bottom to try and blink away, whereas the rest of the Stalker army is gonna blink into the main base, creating more chaos, knowing the timing that it takes for those Siege Tanks to come out. And that's another Siege Tank down the drain. One of the Phoenixes, or one of the Stalkers, rather, uh, very low in hit points, does end up going down. Stimpak is finishing up in 7, 6, 5 seconds right now. The Bio Army has grown, but at this point, it looks so pretty, man. At this point, yeah, there's so many SCVs that have fallen that Cure is effectively forced into an all-in. He can pull the boys, yeah. He can try and maybe get a lucky Stimpak, but... Maxpex also aware of the timing of the stim. Big warping in the main base. Third Nexus in the meantime on the other side. I mean, beautiful. I love this opener. This opener is so sick, yet so hard to execute. But you can see that even Maxpex, right, as good as he is, is not microing these stalkers perfectly. Now, I'm not saying that anybody ever will micro these stalkers perfectly. I'm just saying that, like, we're probably at, like, 97% efficiency or so when it comes to these openers. And I wonder if anybody can ever get to, like, 99% efficiency with these openers, right? Can Terran even be properly played in the early game? It's kind of beautiful. If you had, like, perfect artificial intelligences going up against each other, the Stalker Micro technically has infinite potential. Alright, well, it's so many SCVs going down. Cure is still in this game, technically speaking. But if he ever manages to clean all of this up, which is a big if, his only real option is a, an all-in to watch the other side of the map. And I've got a feeling that that is also going to be something that Max Pax can quite easily hold. Just to put the nail in the coffin, he decides to go for the charge upgrade as well. And when charge finishes up, there's really nothing that the Terran can do anymore. Just micro better, guys. If you're a Protoss player and you're struggling in this matchup, just micro. <laughs> like, whenever you use a, a unit, right, try to get more value out of it. It's easy. GG is cold. Max Pax evens up the score. So, Cure won game number one by going for a proxy barracks on the other side of the map. But you know what's better than one proxy barracks? Two proxy rexes. Game number three, we find ourselves on the map Ancient Cistern. And relatively close to the Protoss side on the map, we do have a bunch of barracks building. It's gonna be tech labs as well, okay. So Cure is gonna be going for a Marauder proxy on the other side of the map. Supply Depot even coming up over here too, so Cure really is gonna go all out with this. 
Now, this should be something that Maxpex has a lot of practice against. He notices as well that once again there's a barracks lacking on the high ground and that there is a gas geyser missing in the main base too. So a little bit of difference compared to game number one. A lot of the Korean Protoss players lately have been skipping that early game probe scout, which is incredibly risky. And against an opener like that, this would be a free win right here from Cure. Against this start though, it's gonna be a hell of a lot harder here for our Terran player, but with some good micro, he should be in a decent position. Shield battery's coming up. Maxpex, of course, has a lot of practice against this opener, right? There's the concussive shells. Relatively cheap upgrade, relatively fast upgrade as well. At this point, Maxpex knows that all he really needs to do is just defend this. That's really his only priority. You obviously want to make some probes as well. You want to continuously produce out of your gateways. You want to make sure that you get a lot of units warped in too. And you want to make sure that you don't really walk too far away from the safety of your shield batteries either. Cure is trying to get to a critical mass where he can start two-shotting those stalkers, even when they are being repaired by the batteries. Shield battery overcharge is also something to keep in mind. So do you want a chrono boost here continuously? Or do you want to leave a little bit of energy in the tank to be able to go for a battery overcharge? That cooldown on that ability is rather long. Max Pack's actually pulling a couple of probes here too. Just enough yeah, to soak some of those extra shots. Okay, one of the Marauders ends up going down. Good start right there for the Danish Protoss. And so far, yeah, no real losses yet on the side of Protoss. And that's tricky because as Terran here, you know that you're on a bit of a timer. Protoss does have a bigger economy already. Obviously, that Nexus on the low ground is done. The two SCVs right now have also been pulled, well, to the front, and they already ended up going down. Those were the ones that, well, originally built that infrastructure on the other side of the map. Apparently, this is the call as well. Okay, the call to arms. Cure decides to pull the additional boys from the other side. He wants to win this game right here, right now. Starts up a... Well, I don't think we want to be going for a Reaper right now. Okay, gets another Stalker over here. Battery Overcharge gets used, but Terran's already on the retreat. In total, one Stalker and one Zealot and one Battery have gone down. Not a terrible start here for Cure, but this really is becoming do or die very quickly. I actually think that Reaper mistake here is gonna cost him quite a bit as well. Okay, upon seeing all of these workers, Maxpex is gonna have to pull some additional probes as well. He does immediately pull the workers from the natural. We're not pulling any of the units from the main base. Okay, battery overcharge here would have been amazing, huh? But that ability is on cooldown for quite a while. That being said, though, that's basically all of the SCVs that were pulled going down. Six probes have already fallen as well. A lot of Marauders, very low at hit points. Maxpex is warping in units on cooldown whenever he can. A lot of the Marauders are so low in hit points. Yeah, he's going to be able to finish them off even with the probes now. And in the end, I am liking this position here for Parodles so much better. Nice micro coming out of both players, but... Yeah, again, this is one of those situations where, technically speaking, being the defender is better. It's just that a lot of Parodles players will mess up this early game defense. It really is a balancing act. I can't believe he didn't pull any of the probes from the main base when he was under so much pressure, but it really is a balancing act right now as the game goes on, right? You really want to be making a lot of probes, but you also want to make sure that you make a bunch of gateway units. Obviously, there's going to be a moment where you may have to leave the safety of your natural. Do you want to go for a Twilight Council? Do you want to go into blink upgrades? Where exactly do you want to take this game right now? It's hard to see exactly what the plan is for our Terran, but you can see that the worker line over here is... Looking very meager compared to the amount of income right now that Maxpex is getting. The Stimpak research is coming up as well on the other side of the map. Okay, so this is going to be the second step in Cure's plan. He wants to continue this all-in by another all-in. Yeah, he wants to continue the all-in with another one. Command Center is building right now on the low ground as well for Cure, so... He is going to have at least some economy on the back of this, but... That does mean that Maxpex is going to be left alone for the foreseeable future. Okay. Problem here for Maxpex, though, is that he doesn't know. Yeah, he decides to scout right now with a probe. He's like, hey, guys. Y'all still out here playing? Or, like, what's going on? Doesn't really see a whole lot. Combat shields also coming up on the other side of the map. Now, finally, the Twilight Council starts up. It's always difficult to make that choice, but... Oftentimes, numbers is really just what you're looking for, right? So, 
There's another probe scout now heading towards the right side. Keep in mind, Maxpex doesn't actually know where these units even came from the first time around. So he's looking all over the map. And he's gonna find the command center here. Okay, he's gonna find the command center on the other side. So he will recognize that this is indeed gonna be at least a game with a little bit of longevity. Stimpak and combat shields are not done just yet, but apparently we're gonna try and pull this uh, trigger right now. Cure really doesn't have a lot of choice. The problem for him, though, is that he's been outproduced here for a while. Yeah, he may have the right units that deal bonus damage against Stalkers and all the rest of it, but he just simply doesn't have the numbers anymore because Maxpex has been mining so much more. Lovely play here as well, by the way, from Maxpex once again. You can see that Maxpex really grinds a ton of games, right? You can really tell because he knew exactly the moment where he needed to move those units from the natural expansion away in case his opponent would go for this particular follow-up. Like, he wanted to engage that bio army before Stimpak and Combat Shields, and he got there at the perfect moment. GG gets cold. Impressive game number two right there. Impressive game number three right there from Maxpex. Game number four. We find ourselves on the map Royal Blood. It's a double Reaper opener here from Terran. Whereas Maxpex, okay, has finally decided to be the aggressor, I believe, as he's now planted a pylon on the other side of the map. He's gonna proxy a gateway over there as well. So this entire series so far, in the early game, is he gonna scout it? Lovely. This entire series so far, in the early game, it's been Maxpex who's been taking all the punches. And apparently in this particular game, he wants to come out swinging. Adept over here on the other side of the map is going to be able to shut down that SCV that was building a command center on the low ground. And this command center on the low ground is the key, right? Cure really needs to finish that one up. He's got a siege tank coming right now. Obviously, there's not a whole lot of units available right now, actually, inside of the main base of Maxpex. So this double Reaper start is going to be able to put in a ton of work. Nice micro there by Cure. Siege tank will be available. He's not cancelled the command center on the low ground. He certainly could have. He could have restarted it in the main base quite a while ago, but I guess he's waiting for his siege tanks to potentially open up the opportunity there to finish up that command center eventually. That is not going to be in range. I was going to say there's no way. I mean, maybe for the Adept, but the Stalker can push at that uh, SCV for quite a while. Reapers in the main base have killed six workers and are not done just yet. Warp gate at this point is done. Maxpex has got three gateways. So he's gonna start warping in units on the other side of the map. Okay, now the question is, will this command center finish? If this command center finishes, the game is gonna be a lot better for Cure. If it does not, however, he's gonna be in a world of trouble. Okay, nice movement right there by Cure. Good micro. He continues building a command center on the low ground, but man, that was dangerous. He could have canceled it when the first Adept came in and then just rebuild it in the main base. But apparently, yeah, he was really attached to this gateway, you know, or to this command center, I guess. He he really, uh, he gave it a name and everything. He already put up the scaffolding. He could get the majority of his money back, but he was invested. And he is going to be able to finish it up. Okay, so, in the end, this early game aggression, though... It didn't really cost Maxpex nearly as much as that early game aggression that we saw from Terran in the previous game. Especially if he puts on the pressure even more in this game. He may have even, yeah, he may even be able to keep this warp gate and the pile on alive over here. He has decided to go for a robo facility now. But I think, yeah, he's gonna be planning to go for a third Nexus as well. So these units are gonna be able to shut down the aggression. I think, once again, Maxpex is going to be playing a defensive game moving forward instead, although... Alright, he tried getting close to those siege tanks. Let me just back up a little bit. So while that Terran army here was moving on over towards the bottom right-hand corner over here, the other siege tanks also came out to play. Really love that move, by the way, from Cure. It's very tempting to keep those units over here, but he recognized that Maxpex was never not going to take that bait. Alright, and he gets a couple of siege tanks on top of the pylon over here that was powering that gateway. Lovely play. Robo Bay on the back of this though from Maxpex, and eventually the Colossus are gonna be joining the battlefield once again. The ball at this point though is in Cure's court. When is he gonna move out? Well, I would say his first proper opportunity is gonna be when the Stimpak research finishes up. He doesn't necessarily need to, but Terran players like being in the, uh, yeah, the driver's seat of the game, so I would not be surprised if he decides to send out a bunch of those units. Those Reapers, by the way, have killed a sufficient amount of probes here in the early game, so... 
Yeah, if you can hit the opponent in the face before any Colossi hit the battlefield, of course, that's going to be quite nice here for our Terran. No third command center just yet. Ooh, I was going to say, that observer? Okay. It was spotted right away. Combat shield upgrade on the back of this too. So Cure is not going to be driving all of his siege tanks across the map just yet. He's going to wait until the plus one infantry weapons is done together with the combat shields. But that of course does mean that Max Pax is going to have a lot of time to continue building up his economy. And also to get those colossi out, right? So extended thermal lines is going to be really neat. There's not going to be a raven or anything along those lines in this particular game. We should probably be going straight into either the Medivac or the Viking production. And that means that Max Max actually is in a pretty playable position, yeah. Now finally the third CC starts up, but of course that is quite a bit later than uh, that Nexus that is now finishing up on the other side of the map. Charge on the back of this too for Max Max, this is his very first Twilight Council upgrade, so I'm not gonna go into the blink first. Really just, yeah, focused on defending whatever aggression is going to be coming his way here. So he knows very well that he is not going to be able to really make an aggressive move until later. So as long as he can finish up whatever the opponent has got planned for him, he's going to be pretty happy about it. A few Marines over here scout out to the best of their abilities what is going on on the other side of the map. And, well, at this point, Cure realizes that his opponent's eco is definitely a little bit bigger than his. But nothing all too crazy, right? I mean, the mules are obviously really good, yeah. As soon as those mules are returning their, uh, their minerals, life is pretty sweet for the Terran player. Okay, so Max Pax sees the move out. The question is, does Protoss have enough to deal with all of these Terran units? Apparently we're not even really going to try. Okay, Cure a little indecisive. He decides to just go for some Medivac aggression, but once again, man... I'm so impressed by, like, how Max Pax always seems to see these things. I know it always sounds so obvious and it seems so easy. But if you've ever played, like, Protoss, it really feels like you're blind the entire game. And this is coming from a Zerk player, right? Like, I play mostly Zerk myself. Zerk can see the entire map compared to both Terran and Protoss. But Protoss in particular usually just lacks so much vision. Yet you're, you know, playing with the units that require the most vision. Because you have like four units. It really feels like you're defending in the early game. With like, yeah, a very small army compared to your opponent. So if your units aren't in the right position in the first place. Because they're so slow as well. It's so tricky to get much done. Well, despite the fact that he scouted these meta effects though. He may not have anticipated this many units popping out of the high heavens. Gonna need some additional reinforcements here. Obviously, there's no blink here available for these stalkers either. So they end up taking a lot of damage and eight probes have gone down. There's a bit of a standoff over here. Terran doesn't really want to fight it. Protoss doesn't really want to fight it. But that's mostly just allowing these units in the main base to get all of this damage in. Now the third command center is going to be flying on down towards the low ground as well. And of course, with the third CC being secured, we have to transition towards the Ghost Academy. A couple of Zealots here get warped in inside of the natural expansion of the Terran, but that's not going to achieve much. At the very least, the uh, the Prism stays alive, but not ideal. Cheeky little Widow Mind drop coming in as well. Trying to just kill as many workers as possible. The standoff, by the way, has happened. And it's ended. Siege tanks are going to siege up once again at home. Fourth Nexus, built at the fourth base location here for Max Pax, but you can see that this game is going from bad to worse. Yeah, Cure at this point is not going in for the kill necessarily, he's just slowly suffocating his opponent. He could unsiege all of his units and put all of his eggs in one basket and try to go for an all-in, but he recognizes that that is just a risk that he does not need to take. Instead, he's just slowly whittling away here at his opponent and trying to choke him out. I mean, you can always you can always accidentally lose against a disruptor hit, right? There's always those mistakes that can happen. And generally speaking, in a game of StarCraft II, when you're ahead, your main goal should be to try and get more ahead. And if there's anybody who likes playing this uh, double-pronged aggression, it definitely is Cure. He's gonna go after the Nexus here as well. Technically a little bit risky. Okay, forcing the Colossi to deal splash damage to only a small chunk right there of the Terran army. Fourth base is gone, third base is gone, couple more SCVs, or I guess that we can call those uh, Protoss SCVs? Anyways, couple more of the workers right there from the Terran, uh, or from the Protoss rather, ended up going down in the main base as well. I mean, 
This is gonna force Maxpex into a move. He needs to go for some aggression, but how in the world are you gonna push into yeah, this, this army of sieged up tanks? The aggression continues in the meantime as well on the other side. I guess the only criticism right here for Cure is that he never made his armory, but it turns out 2-2 two, two upgrades aren't necessary. Excellent game right there from the Terran. Okay, and that will bring us to the final game in this best of five series that takes place on the map Altitude. Let's see. So, Cure has decided to send an SCV quite early on into this game to watch the other side of the map, but not for a proxy barracks. Instead, we're building a proxy engineering bay. I guess that's what we can call it. This is going to be an engineering bay block, though. So every single game so far, Maxpex has been going for the expansion on the low ground. Right about right now, you'll be more than happy to send the probe down here soon. And, well, he's going to be in for a nasty surprise. This is a, a, a rough moment, man, because you've got your 400 minerals coming up right now. And then you see, ah, oh, no, not this again. All right, so what's your best move? Well, it seems that the Protoss players have decided taking the third base now is the best move, but it's annoying. It's not really what you're hoping for. Then again, though, this is the largest map in the StarCraft II map pool. So any sort of follow-up aggression right now from Cure is going to hit a little bit later. But I'm always a fan of these Engineering Bay Block openers. I think they're very powerful. They're going to force the Protoss player into a position that feels uncomfortable. And while technically speaking, on paper, this isn't really that bad for Protoss at all. I think the vast majority of Protoss players out there prefer having the natural as their very first base. Just because it's something they have practiced many, many more times than having their third base as their very first. And then obviously you can cancel the engineering bay as well. Cure purposefully waiting right there until the probe was in vision. He's like, ha 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 ha. Got you now, buddy. I even got my 94 minerals back. Stargate here, unsurprisingly, on a map like this. Um, very good opener. Since the map is just simply very large, there's a lot of wide open space. And since you have to control a lot of space as well when your third base is taken as your first expansion, it is certainly a very good choice. Hellion opener, this time around from Cure. Hmm, okay. Obviously, um, any sort of Hellion drops or... For example, Widowmine drops are very annoying as well, because Protoss is going to have to go all the way around if they want to defend those locations. This SCV may be in some trouble over here, but... Yeah. No worries. We're going to be able to finish up that command center pretty easily. Okay. So Cure wants to drive those Hellions, I think, just straight into the mineral line. He doesn't really even need a Medivac here, of course. It's not going to be a Phoenix opener this time around, by the way. We're going to go straight into an Oracle. That's probably also something that Mr. Maxpex is specifically doing against this sort of start. So, Maxpex is known to be an absolute, well, ladder grinder. This man is basically online 24-7. At least that's what it feels like. Um, he plays a ton of games. When you play a lot of games of StarCraft 2, I know that this seems very obvious, but you really know how to handle all of these different scenarios that you can be in. Like, if you play a lot of games, you also will recognize these situations and you will recognize what you need to do a lot more rapidly. And it's a very obvious thing, but that's why a lot of StarCraft players that are good at the game grind an abnormal amount of matches. I mean, at least at some point in their careers, right? There is a moment where I think mass practice really isn't that useful anymore. So some of the top dogs, for example, like Serral and Raynor and Clem and whatnot, like they, they don't necessarily play 30 games a day anymore. It just doesn't really help them out that much. They have the mechanical skill, they know what to do, and oftentimes thinking is actually more effective. But I think every single pro gamer, every single person that's good at StarCraft, at some point in their careers, had a moment where they decided to practice hard and they put in an absurd amount of games. You have to. Just building up that mechanical skill and recognizing what needs to be done in every scenario is critical. Oracle on the other side of the map has got one kill. Cyclone coming up as well. Keep in mind, of course, this is not the new multiplayer balance patch just yet. I've seen a little bit of confusion as far as that goes lately. Um, the new StarCraft II balance patch that I've made a video about a couple of weeks ago, it was a proposed balance patch. And it's currently still on the public test server in StarCraft 2, so there is a chance that we will be seeing that in the future. It's really looking like we will see it in the near future, maybe sometime next month, but there's no denying that these are still the good old Cyclone that we are all very familiar with. Now, of course, if you want to stay up to date with everything StarCraft related, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. 
I will definitely update you as soon as the new multiplayer balance patch will go live. And of course, I will try and cover as many games from the new patch as well when it goes live. Together with the map pool, actually. Cool little update about the map pool. As we see these phoenixes flying around. I've been advocating for this for years, and I've talked about it a lot, and I've mentioned it to some people that do have uh, a little bit of power in the StarCraft world. Unlike me, I just talk about the game. There are currently nine maps in the map pool on the StarCraft 2 PTR. And I think nine maps is something that we should have had years ago. So nine maps, I mean, the main downside of it is that we would have you know, a slightly longer vetoing phase. So say, for example, you're doing a StarCraft tournament and it's a best of three. Players will have to veto one extra map each. But the main advantage is that we will just simply have more variety and some of the crazier maps from the Team Liquid map contest have a chance to be, well, making it into the map pool as well. Because the longest series we ever play in StarCraft 2 in competitive tournaments is best of sevens. The worst maps can always get vetoed by the players if they turn out to be just awful. And I think nine maps is one of the ways that you can really spice up the meta a ton. So currently on the PTR, as of a couple of days ago, we now have nine maps in the map pool. And I really hope that that is one of the things we will see coming through. Also, Black Lotus, which I consider to be one of the worst maps I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> it did not make it to the next phase of the PTR. So I... I <laughs> Black Lotus. Sorry to the map maker, but Black Lotus really did look pretty awful. Yeah, I'm glad to uh, let you know that that map is not going to be making it into the next competitive season, it looks like. In case you missed it, basically Black Lotus had like a... I guess we can call them pervert pillars, right? That's what I've been calling them. Like a little overlord pillar right over here where the overlord can hang out. The Black Lotus pervert pillar was so large that you could drop three sieged up tanks in your opponent's natural! You, you could... <laughs> you could see chop tanks on the pillar in your opponent's It was so bad, dude. And that wasn't even the worst part of it. I could talk about that map for like five minutes, but I'm not going to. Because I've already not talked about the game for like five minutes now. Anyways, PTR looking good. Hit the subscribe button so you get notified as soon as future videos go live. We've got ourselves a lot of gateways coming up right now because Maxpex recognizes that he needs to defend against whatever it is that the Terran player is going to store for him. That being said, this army right here from Cure, it's been wandering around the map for a little while. It is not looking like something that's going to be able to jump the Protoss army very easily, but Maxpex at this point in the game doesn't have a lot of units. He knows that these Phoenixes are critical, they have a ton of energy saved up as well. These Colossi do have their extended thermal lens upgrade at this point in the game, which is awesome, but at the same time... They're also a relatively flimsy unit. Instead though, Cure has decided I'm not gonna really rely on this all too much. I love this. Stasis Ward to block the expansion. Yeah, we're gonna have to, well, put a unit in Stasis in order to get rid of this thing, but... That's gonna delay that command center a ton. Oh, well, he put it in the perfect spot. Not gonna delay the command center very much, huh? Anyways, there's already a Stasis here as well at the bottom. Love to see that. It is gonna be a nice little macro game, it looks like. Yeah. Nice little macro game to end things. Okay. So who do you think is better currently at a macro game between these two? Honestly, I think I've been more impressed overall by mech specs. Then again, though, Cure, like I said at the start of this video, is an absolute destroyer of Protoss players right now. We haven't really seen him go for that split aggression very much yet, but he's starting it up right now. If you look at the minimap, this is something that Cure does a ton. No cancel on that Nexus, that's massive. 400 minerals down the drain. He basically splits his army into two massive chunks. And he just starts aggression all over the map. So unlike, for example, Bjorn, who will like start dropping in seven different areas at once, bit of an exaggeration, Cure very much so seems to be the type of guy who will just split his army in two instead. And he tries to micro the both of them. Obviously, stutter-stepping two armies at once is nearly impossible, but somehow, some way, Cure seems to be able to make it work. Getting the denial right there on that fourth base, though. Really lovely stuff. Ghosts are coming up as well, right as Protoss is about to transition towards, well, those High Templar as well as the Archons. So... Yeah, Cure is definitely on point here, but not really in a position where he can push for the win anytime soon. A couple of zealots here do end up getting cancelled because he does not want to lose that prism. If he can kill one of those ghosts, I think one of them may have already gone down, actually. That would have been pretty sweet. 
Aggression over here continues as well. Protoss, of course, also forced to split up their army. And that's always a dangerous thing. One zealot here gets sacrificed in exchange for a widow mine. Not the end of the world. But I think for now, yeah, Max Pex is going to be able to hold on. He's got a ton of zealots over here. Matter of fact, drop thinking about going towards the right side of the map and maybe even the main base of the Protoss. Although this new base over here is certainly also a target. It's just that there's a lot of units nearby. Okay, we're gonna have to boost because the Phoenixes are coming dangerously close. Cure is gonna go for a Doom Drop into the main base of the Protoss. Recall, however, has been used on some of the heavy hitters. And those units are gonna be met by an awful large army. Phoenix is now also, hello, should really be working on some of those Metavex, but that's also because there's aggression going on over here. Fourth Nexus in a little bit of trouble. Phoenixes are finally gonna turn around, but there wasn't enough available for the Protoss player to deal with all of this. In the meantime, the Nexus here might be in some trouble, but it looks like Cure does not have enough stuff. He's dealing a lot of damage in the main base. He already took care of a couple of Colossi. Mineral Line now also in some trouble, and probes are starting to fall. The rest of that bio army maneuvering around, maybe trying to get an angle on the third base, or maybe an expansion a little bit further up north. That's now 17 probes down the drain. A lot of expensive Protoss units have already fallen as well, and you can see that difference right there in the resources lost. Medivac drop trying to come in for more. No missile turret set up here, interestingly enough, but we do have a little bit of bio available, Prism. Uh, it looks like it may end up going down here because the Vikings right now are chasing it. And that's going to be the end for that aggression on the other side of the map for now. Okay. Well, at the very least, Maxpex does have four Nexi. Yeah, if he wants to, he can reproduce those workers pretty quickly. Fourth Command Center, however, is now growing a little planetary fortress head on top of itself. And this game is really not going well at all for the Protoss here overall. This is, of course, still a small mistake away from being an advantage right now for Protoss, but Cure is controlling the pacing of this match very lovely. Shutting down all of the aggression at home while dealing with a lot of the units there on the other side of the map, is this army at this point big enough to go for an all-out push? With most of those Colossi gone, yeah, we had two Colossi killed, so I guess half of the Colossi gone. It's gonna be difficult here for Maxpex to really get aggression done. He's got a lot of Archons, yeah, but like nine Archons is also kind of the point where they start bumping into each other a lot. So like, yeah, Nine Archons is really good if you want to do like a split up push. But if you put them all in one big ball, there will always be a couple that are in the back kind of derping around, not really contributing until the ones in the front die. So I don't really like pushing with an army like this nearly as much. I mean, it's powerful when it comes to clearing out that Terran aggression, but not quite enough to really go after a planetary. Yeah, there's not really a whole lot here that our Protoss player can get done with the units that he's got right now. Additional Robo facilities though. Coming up on the back of this, I think Maxpex is going to be going for that mass disruptor style that we have been seeing as of late. Once again, Cure ready to split up his units. Gets one of the Archons as well as the Disruptor. Lovely play. Okay, now, yeah, these Archons and Zealots are going to be pretty good though at clearing out most of this army. But again, this distraction on the right side is opening up the front door here for Cure to start dealing damage on the left. And this is the classic one-two punch. Cure is super good at it. Yep, units here from Max Max, not in the right place. Technically, he had all of the tools he needed to deal with it, but Cure seems to be outpacing him with just a little bit too much speed. Command Center number five starts up. The Disruptor production, though, right now is in full swing, and that's gonna make the defense generally a lot easier, especially when Terran is splitting all of their attention between two different locations on the map. It may become a lot harder here for Terran to, well, pay attention to all of that. Beautiful EMP, though, getting so much damage done. Really softening up that army, but yeah. Those Purification Novas become a lot more lethal when you're focusing so much of your attention in multiple areas at the same time. That Disruptor is looking like a juicy target, but Max Pax is not gonna be able to get too much value out of it just yet. A single kill here in total. EMPs still landing left, right, and center. Now here's the plus one flyer upgrade coming up here for Cure. Looks like the Vikings are slowly starting to work. Ooh, big disruptor. Uh, the Vikings are, yeah, starting to work on all of the Colossi, and I think that's gonna be the last for that fight over on the left. There's one more Colossus remaining here in this game, but I think the age of the Colossus is gone. Now, of course, when Terran gets that air superiority, we can really start thinking about making a Liberator transition as well. And that's where those 
Yeah, air weapon attacks come in handy, right? It's super nice to get those liberators going because Protoss doesn't really have a solid answer against that mass liberator style. It is at the very least something that Cura is going to keep in his back pocket here. It's always going to be an option for him. Another command center growing a planetary fortress. And we'll probably see the same thing happening here on the left. Maxpex has been trying to play catch up for a long while now. And we're getting to the point, yeah, he's maxed out, but he is... He's being outgrown. Like, the Terran army here is going to be able to regrow very rapidly over the next few minutes. Cure does not quite have the money in the bank to instantly remax in, like, a few production cycles. But in a minute or two from now, he will have that. So it becomes very critical right now for Max Max to get something done. But what in the world is, going to, is he going to do? Like, if he wants to fight this, he's going to have to push into a planetary fortress, it seems. Okay, we're gonna think about at least putting all of our units together, but Cure sees this coming in with a scan. He's now also set up in multiple areas, though. That being said, this is a, a very scary army. Like, this scary army here from the Protoss needs to be respected. Terran here trying their very best to keep this army split up once again. Big Purification Novas did connect there, but at the same time, we also had some nice EMPs going down, really softening up that army. 17 SCVs have gone down already as well. Cure has got enough units left over to chase down the remainder of this Protoss ball. That Purification Nova is going to force the Terran army to turn around, but 17 SCVs at the 17 minute mark or so really don't matter that much anymore. You can very quickly replace them. Now we have the Fusion Core coming up. We have another starport already done. This is the moment where that Liberator production can really start. And it's going to be difficult for Max Max to find a proper answer. He's not in a position here to go into Tempest or anything along those lines. Stalkers with Blink are decent, but when the Liberator count really grows, you can't really fight it anymore with just Stalkers and Archons alone. There's the plus two air weapons coming up as well. There's the advanced ballistics. So this is the scary upgrade. This gives those liberators some additional range on their anti-ground zone. And it's going to be really hard for Max Specs to fight that. Cure's economy right now looking solid. Yeah. He's got enough stuff, right? So another Nexus is building right now up north. It's actually just finished. And, well, if Cure is any sand and matter, he wants to shut this down. Now he sees the liberators coming up. The first few Liberators will get killed. Some of the leftover Vikings from earlier also trying to work on those Colossi. I do like that transition, though, from Max Max. Going back into the Colossus with most of the Vikings landed on the ground and going down. I actually think that was an excellent choice. Once again, trying to come in. Shutting down the Disruptor production over here. Although, they weren't even coming in the first place. Max Max can think about breaking the main base here. He did break into the Natural. Ooh, okay, those Widow Mines putting in a bunch of work as well. That Colossus running dangerously low. And you know what? The Widow Mines, okay, they may <laughs> be retargeted. They may have been able to get it. Now the Planetary Fortress is being repaired. Oh, okay, we do have a nice Purification Nova over here. And this may very well be the end of this expansion, but that PF is putting in so much work. It looks like Max Pex's army is not big enough to take out the Planetary Fortress. And in the meantime, Cure already took down another Nexus on the other side of the map. It's Cure, who wins this Best of 5 series 3-2-2.